think you grow rich. The 50 cents lesson and persistence. Shortly after Mr. Darby received his degree from the University of Hard Knocks and had decided to profit by his experience in the gold mining business, he had the good fortune to be present on an occasion that proved to him that no does not necessarily mean no. One afternoon, he was helping his uncle grind wheat in an old-fashioned mill. The uncle operated a large farm of which a number of colored sharecropper farmers live quietly the door open and a small colored girl the daughter of a tenant walked in and took her place near the door the uncle looked up saw the child and barked at her quickly or roughly what do you want meekly the child replied my mammy said send her 50 cents I'll do it not. I'll not do it, the uncle retorted. Now you run on home. Yes, yeah, sir, the child replied. But she did not move. The uncle went ahead with his work, so busy engaged that he did not pay enough attention to the child to observe that she did not leave. When he looked up and saw her still standing there, he yelled at her. I told you to go home. Now you go or I'll take a switch to you. The little girl said, yes, sir. But she did not move an inch. The uncle dropped the sack of grain and he was about to pour, that he was about to pour into the mill hopper, picked up a barrel staff and started toward the child with an expression on his face that indicated trouble. Darby held his breath. He was certain he was about to witness a murder. He knew his uncle had a fierce temper. He knew that a colored children or colored children were not supposed to defy white people in that part of the country. When the uncle reached the spot where the child was standing, she quickly stepped one step forward. Not backwards, but she quickly stepped one step forward, looked up into his eyes, and screamed at the top of her voice, My mammy got to have that 50 cents. The uncle stopped. Mm. Looked at her for a minute, then slowly laid the barrel staff on the floor, put his hand in his pocket, <clears throat> took out a half a dollar and gave it to her. The child took the money and slowly backed toward the door, never taking her eyes off the uh, old man whom she had just conquered. After she had gone, the uncle sat on a box and looked out the window into space for more than 10 minutes. He was pondering with awe over the whipping he had just taken. Mr. Darby too was doing some thinking. That was the first time in his experience <clears throat> that he had seen a colored child deliberately master an adult white person. How did she do it? What happened to his uncle that caused him to lose his fierceness and become as docile as a lamb? What strange power did the child use that made her master over her superior? These and other questions flashed into Darby's mind, but he did not find the answer until years later when he told me the story. Strangely, the story of this unusual experience was told to the author in the old mill on the very spot the uncle took his whipping. Strangely, too, I had devoted nearly a quarter of a century of studying of the power which enabled an ignorant illiterate colored child to conquer an intelligent man. As we stood there in that mushy old mill, Mr. Darby repeated the story of the unusual conquest and finished by asking, what can you make of it? What strange power 
did the child use that so completely whipped my uncle? The answer to this question will be found in the principles described in this book. The answer is full and complete. <clears throat> it contains details and instructions sufficient to enable anyone to understand and apply the same force which the little child accidentally is stumbled upon. Keep your mind alert and you will observe exactly what strange power came to the rescue of the child. You will catch a glimpse of this power in the next chapter. Somewhere in this book you will find an idea that will quicken your receptive power and place at your command. For your own benefit, this same irresistible power. The awareness of this power may come to you in the first chapter or may flash into your mind in some subsequent chapter. It may in the form of a single idea or it may come in the nature of a plan or a purpose again it may cause you to go back into your past experiences of failure or defeat and bring to the surface some lesson by which you can regain all that you lost through defeat after I had described to Mr. Darby the power unwittingly used by the little colored child, he quickly retraced his 30 years of experience as a life insurance salesman and frankly acknowledged that his success in the field was due in no small degree to the lesson he had learned from the child. Mr. Darby pointed out, every time a prospective tried to bow me out without buying, I saw that child standing there in the old mill, her big eyes glaring in defiance. I said to myself, I've got to make this sale. The better portion of all sales I have made were made after people had said no. He recalled too his mistake in having stopped only three feet from gold, but he said, that experience was a blessing in disguise. It taught me to keep on keeping on, no matter how hard the going may be, a lesson I need to learn before I could succeed in anything. The story of Mr. Darby and his uncle, the colored child and the gold mine, doubtless will be read by hundreds of men who make their living by selling life insurance. And to all of these, the author wishes to off offer the suggestion that Darby owes to these two experiences his ability to sell more than a million dollars of life insurance every year. Life is strange and often reappondable, but both the success and failures have their roots in simple experiences. Mr. Darby's experience were commonplace and simple enough, yet they had the answer to his destiny in life. Therefore, they were as important to him as life itself. He profited by these two dramatic experiences because he analyzed them and found the lesson they taught. But what of the man who has neither the time nor the inclination to study failure in search of knowledge that may lead to his success. Where and how is he to learn the art of converting defeat into stepping stones to opportunity? In the answer to this question, this book was written. The answer called for a description of 13 principles Remember, as you read, the answer you may be seeking to the questions which have caused you to ponder over the strangeness of life may be found in your own mind through some idea, plan, or purpose which may spring into your mind as you listen and read. One sound idea 
is all that one needs to achieve success. The principle described in this book contain the best and the most practical of all that is known concerning ways and means of creating useful ideas. Before we go any further in our approach to the description of these principles, we believe you are entitled to receive this important suggestion. When riches begin to come, they come so quickly in such great abundance that one wonders where they have been hiding during all these lean years. This is an astounding statement and all the more so when we take into consideration the popular belief that riches come only to those who work hard and long. When you begin to think and grow rich you will observe that riches begin with a state of mind, with definiteness of purpose, with little or no hard work. You and every other person are to be interested in knowing how to achieve the state of mind which will attract riches. I spent 25 years in research analyzing more than 25,000 people because I, too, wanted to know how wealthy men became that way. Without that research, this book could not have been written. Here, take notice of a very significant truth. Here, take notice of a very significant truth. This, the business depression started in 1929 and continued on to an all-time record of destruction until something after President, some time after President Roosevelt entered office. Then the depression began to fade into nothingness. Just as an electrician in a theater raises the light so gradually that darkness is transmuted into light before you realize it, so did the spell of fear in the minds of people gradually fade away and become faith. Observe very closely, as soon as you master